my dear viewer, welcome again to our series of 40 Days of Prayer. This is day 16 since we began uh, this uh, series of Moment with the Lord in Prayer. And today we are still advancing with the Word series and we are especially looking at the Word in a symbol of light. But before we start, let's say a prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you for the privilege that we have, the precious moment to be with you and be for you. As we briefly share from the scripture and have time more to pour our hearts to you. Lord, we invite your presence to be with me right here and be with my viewer wherever they are. The Lord you shall bless us with your presence, for it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. For today's of prayer, day 16, the word as a light. And so text, of, of course, is Psalms 119, I know, uh, verse 105. Psalms 119, verse 105. The word of God says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Bible looks at the scripture as light. Light. Now, you remember we, we said, uh, we saw where Christ said, you are the light of the world. But not today here. God says, the word of God is the light. The light. We are the light of the world, but the word of God is the light or a lamp unto our feet. You know, when you look at the symbols here, the word is a lamp unto my feet. It speaks of something that shines or lightens or illuminates our path. So the purpose of the word of God in this text, a light unto my path, it simply means the word of God is the means through which we are guided as to where to step, how to walk, to be able to see the path clearly, to be able to see the way, to be able to see the obstacles on the way. You see, when you're walking in the night and you, you, uh, you don't have light, then you're always in fear of stumbling. You're always in fear that you may hit stones or something and you may hurt yourself. You, you, know, you, you, you don't have confidence as you walk. You, you, you don't feel secure as you walk in. And our Christian walk is likened to that physical walk here on earth. So when we don't have the word of God as Christians, then we lose confidence in the work, in the journey. We are not sure whether we are safe as we walk through. We don't know how we can uh, figure out the obstacles on our way because we are not able to see. And so the word of God then in this text is what enables you and me to see the way clearly. Now, listen to me. Christ said, I am the way. That path to heaven is Christ Jesus. And, and, and when we bring it in this context, then it simply means, that David is saying here, your word is the light that shines that I can be able to see the way. You cannot see Jesus as he is without the scriptures. It is in the scriptures we interact with Jesus. The scriptures illuminate, shines, gives forth light of righteousness. The scriptures reveals Jesus. It is through the scriptures we see him, Jesus, and so we see the way. So David here says, the word is a lamp unto my feet. 
Now, before we talk about the light, if you look at the first uh, symbol, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, it's very, very significant, very, very important. You see, lamps don't light without spirit, without oil, rather. Lamps don't light without oil. You've got to put some oil inside, some paraffin, some something that can make it light. And so the word of God will not shine in your heart, in your life, without the spirit of God. It is the spirit of God in the word that makes the one shine in your life. It is the spirit of God that makes the one shine in the world. It is the spirit of God that makes you figure out and see Jesus as he is. Now, David says, your word is a lamp unto my feet, meaning when I study the word, therein I interact with the power of the word of God, the spirit in the word of God, and together the scripture, the word of God, and the spirit of God transforms me renews me, opens my eyes that I'm able to see the way that is Jesus Christ. And so friends, this moment as we seek the Lord in prayer, today we are focusing on the aspect of this one of God to be able to guide our path, our way, our ways of life. It is the word of God that cancels us. The word of God has him as, as power to direct us into paths of righteousness. The word of God, you know, David says, have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. It is the word of God that controls us from the excesses of life. It is the word of God that restrains us, you know, for the love of God can strengthen us. You know, when we interact with the word of God, then we are, we are retained within the confines of the provisions of righteousness, without which you can see God. And so this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you're watching us from or whatever time you are in, we want to invite you to think about the power that is in the word of God to guide you. And are you guided by the word of God? Do you think and feel that the word of God is supreme authority in our life? Do you feel and accept that the word of God is the rule of faith that we have? It's what guides us. It's what shows us the way. It is what discerns our intents. It is what speaks of the purposes of God for us. It is what speaks of the intentions of God for this life and our lives. It is what reveals God as he is. And the plan of redemption, we all interact through the scriptures. How much do you study the word of God? On a daily basis, do you study the word of God? Do you take time to study the word of God? How often do you do this? You know, I know some people who just wake in the morning, they just pray, they go. They come in the evening, they pray, they go. The only time they interact with the scriptures is when they're in church or when there's an organized Bible study. But imagine how you live without the word of God. It is like going through the night without light and every night without light. So we are invited to turn back to the scriptures and be students of the scriptures to search and see what God expects of us. Did you know that in the scriptures, there are so many promises. In fact, one guy was counting the promises of God in the scriptures, and he's saying there are enough promises for each single day in 365 days of the year. So imagine that through the scriptures, you can identify a promise for each day. Uh, maybe one of these um, uh, uh, fine days I'm going to just have a, a program here where we will be just speaking of a single promise for each day and perhaps you take an, a couple of days to see how that looks like. But imagine in the scriptures, God has placed all the promises that you may desire and need to help you journey on. The scriptures is the breath of God received. But today we are saying the scripture, the 
the word of God is a light, is a lamp that gives light. You shine in our hearts, you shine on our journey, on our paths, that we may not stumble in our Christian walk. Other things you need to seek the Lord because you look into your life and you see you have stumbled in one way or another. This one of God is able to guide you in how you can ask for forgiveness, repentance, and be able to walk with the Lord. I invite you to join me as we pray. And uh, for other prayer concerns that we have, you know, globally as a church, allow me to quickly give you one or two so that we can, we can join together as we pray. Uh, we are going to pray for strength to have faith in God's promises and not be dragged down by our feelings or doubt or fear. Pray the promise of God's word over the seven people on your list. Also pray that Jesus' love and the, and the truths of his word would find entrance into those countries where there is no Adventist presence. Pray for believers that are experiencing great religious persecution, especially in Russia, China, and the Middle East countries. Pray also for those who have chosen to be baptized since the conflict started in Eastern Europe. Pray for those decisions that will, they, will be, they, will, they may be permanent as we make them. This and those that you're having and the ones that they may have come into your mind as you briefly spoke from the scriptures is what you commit to the Lord. Wherever you are, take time, speak to the Lord. And join with me as we pray together. Our gracious Father in heaven, this moment, we thank you for the privilege and the precious moment that we have to share and to be at your feet. It is always awesome to be at your feet. Here we find forgiveness. Here we find hope. Here we find grace. Here we find eternal life. This morning, Lord, we thank you for reminding us that we have a word, which is your word in the scriptures, which to us is a lamb. It's the light for our path. Lord, we are praying that as we walk this journey of faith, we will never lose sight of the scriptures. This is the rule of faith that we may catch the spirit of reformers, Martin Luther and his team, who would stand at a critical moment and say, by scripture and scripture alone, for in the word of God is eternal life. Don't this word is able to dissect our thoughts and intents and reveal the true colors of our lives and guidance into repentance and guide us into the path of righteousness for your name's sake. And Lord, we are praying today for a renewed appetite for your word, a renewed interest for your word, a renewed commitment of study of your word. The Lord, we shall be enriched, we shall be equipped, and we shall be thoroughly furnished with all that we require and need for this journey as we wait for the second coming. And thank you, Lord, even for the request that we are presenting, that the church has posted. And we thank you even for those that my viewer is giving and seeking from you this moment, Lord. All together we pray that we shall join and answer them according to thy riches in glory. Those who have been weak and stumbling and backslidden, those who may have forgotten about it, the start of your word, we are seeking even through this 40 days of prayer and especially today for a special revival. I know Bible studies may have stopped in some homes, Lord. We are praying that you may cause a revival in those homes, that Bible studies may be again active in those families. I know the churches have prayer moments and Bible studies uh, times allocated, but because of many each issues and, and busy schedules and, 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 and you know, struggles here and there, such good, important programs are fading away. We are, Lord, praying this moment for a renewed spirit within even the family and the church for a revived study of your word in small groups, individuals, corporately as a church, that we will be busy in the study of the word, that we shall be able to see our path and see how we walk as Christians in this critical time, the history of the world. So Lord, may you fill us with the spirit, which is a world that keeps the lamp burning, that this will never be quenched, 
but because of the power of the Holy Spirit, we will continue being agitated for the study of your word, not just being agitated for study, but also be agitated to share and to tell others about your love. Lord, we continue to pray for a special outpouring of the power of the Holy Spirit upon us, Lord. Through this season, I pray that let it not, Lord, be just another uh, season of, of being uh, in prayer, but now uh, no, no fruits availing nothing. But Lord, indeed, this shall be a season where we are transformed, we are revived, we, we are shaken in ways that we can be fitted for eternity. So we thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you, Lord, this afternoon or this evening, wherever my viewer would be, could be. But we pray that your presence, the, the power of the Holy Spirit, will be our encouragement, our confidence. We shall feel the moving of the power of the Holy Spirit. We shall be renewed and be equipped and be, be prepared for the second coming, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.